Wow, what a cliffhanger. Season two, episode eight of My Adventures with Superman is now out, The Death of Superman, and we got a lot to talk about. I really like where they're going in this episode, examining the loneliness of Clark and the isolation of him being an alien on Earth. Obviously, that's been explored in many different formats, you know, whether it's Smallville, the comic books, or any of the movies with Superman. But the way that this show is handling it for a new audience and a new generation is really fun. And I really like Jack Quaid's performance as Superman. I think I talked about it in a previous episode. His vulnerability as both Clark and as Kal-El has been fantastic. And now... It's to the point where I was reading the comic book for My Adventures with Superman. They've got two issues out right now, but I heard Jack Quay's voice in my head. So that is definitely a, a compliment. Just like with Kevin Conroy as Batman, it's something that, you know, you hearing their voice in your head is something that endears you to the character and to the actor that's playing them. But man, there's so much going on with Clark in his mind palace. Brainiac manipulating his memories. I really like that aspect of it. Clark understanding, hey, this is not the way it happened. This is not the way it went down. Him showing that his love for his family and his friends is a strength and not a weakness. To me, that's core Superman. That's 100% who the character is. So I loved that and him getting to that point. But I, I think I would have liked that to be the conclusion of him getting out instead of it felt kind of like a fake out to the point where it was almost like a red herring because you're thinking that he's going to break free of Brainiac. Him and Kara are both attacking Brainiac, but then that just gives Brainiac the advantage and the little opening that he needs to get into Clark's body. And we have this new form of Brainiac's mind in Clark's body. That's or Kal-El's body. And that's a formidable foe. It's crazy to think about how are you going to stop that, right? Like this supreme intelligence in an extremely powerful and strong body. That's one that I was thinking about and saying, man, the the force that you need to overcome this is going to be so great. And that's what I like a lot about these type of shows where you don't know how they're going to escape. You don't know how the hero is going to overcome all of these insurmountable odds but Brainiac, this version of him is also very interesting. Michael Emerson adding a lot with his vocal performance and the visual design of Brainiac is not like a lot of the stuff that we've seen. The three dots is similar in the triangle, but you compare this to the like the 90s Superman animated series version of Brainiac. And we've had like the green alien Brainiac over the years. But this is something that's fresh, a fresh take on it. And I like this. I like that. I think going forward in, in the 2020s, it's like this is the version of Brainiac that I'm going to think of. They really could do something in the live action with Brainiac. That's a, a source that they have not tapped into. But I'm loving this this whole interpretation of Brainiac. And him being the father figure of Kara, and she's thinking that, I mean, she even calls him father that's there's a lot of stuff to unpack there about the relationship and then even after she realizes he's evil he's been manipulating her erasing her memories she punches him she still feels bad and apologizes i'm sorry that i did that I'm so, and so those deep f family connections or family ties run through kara and it's not just an easy thing to to brush him off so I like that. I like that emotional depth and weight to it. And it's not like a, an easy thing to do would be just to make it like for a Saturday morning cartoon. And the villains are all one note, black and white. There's no depth to them, no emotion. And then the characters, the, the other characters themselves have no weight or emotion to them. But this one with Kara, like I said, she's got these these years of trauma with Brainiac and thinking he's a good guy. Now, all of a sudden she has to, re you know, change that in her mind and deal with that, reconcile with that. So that's a lot of interesting stuff that's going on there. And then we have the Jimmy and Lois and the, the brain and the monkey crew, the, the gorilla. I like their kind of 
comic timing and the, and the sidekicks of nature of them, but it's really interesting the way that they kind of twist this whole storyline and say, okay, we think Lois breaking up with Clark is going to be what leads him down this path of like, man, he feels so lonely and so vulnerable. That's a human emotion. That's a human reaction. And that's one of the things that makes Superman great. He's an alien, but because he was raised by humans, raised by Martha and Jonathan, he has this humanity to him. He sees himself as a human being. And that's something the great, you know, dichotomy of Superman and seeing that through many facets of, of his personality and many interpretations of Superman over the years. So I love all of that stuff. Being a Superman fan, it just brings it home for me. And with a fresh coat of paint on it. Like I said, this is a new version of Superman for this new generation. Like um, People who are into manga and anime, this is your version of Superman. I'm glad that they're adding this to the canon. And I'll be able to put it up there with Superman the Animated Series, with Justice League, and a lot of the other great Superman things over the years. So I'm having a great time with my adventures with Superman. I'm interested and curious if you're having a great time with this show. I've seen just a little bit of backlash, just a little bit of uh, people not enjoying it. But for overall, mostly I've seen positive stuff. And I'm not seeing as much as I did when the show first premiered. So I'm actually curious to know, in your thoughts and, and your comments down below... What are how are you gauging this show so far? There's only two episodes left. How are they going to wrap up this Brainiac storyline? And then what are they going to lead into the third season? Because that was the thing about the first season. You had Brainiac in the background, and he was being unveiled, but we didn't get his motivations. We didn't get a lot of the, the stuff that it was, um, was pushing him forward. And now, in this season, what's going to go into season three? So I'm very curious. I'm having a great time on my adventures with Superman. I hope you are as well. I also hope that you're enjoying This Comic Cooks. We're going to be trying to bring more comic stuff to your table, to your plate. But if there's a series you want us to talk about, Absolute Power just came out at DC. The Ultimate stuff is cooking right now with Marvel. If there's something specific you want to see, hear me talk about or cover, let me know in the comments down below.